Okay, we want to go on a little bit now and talk about some more uh, general magnetic geometry. Uh, again, still in these properties of the equilibrium equations. So this is sort of the, uh, I guess, the sixth uh, more general magnetic geometry. Magnetized plasma geometry. geometry over here, running out of space. And let's go back to our equations. Grad P is equal to J cross B, and uh, J is equal to 1 over mu naught curl of B. And in fact, we should probably also remind, keep reminding ourselves that whatever magnetic field we have, it surely has no magnetic monopoles. So now we can imagine getting a rather general relation if we take the J is equal to curl B and substitute it into uh, grad P is equal to J cross B. <coughs> if we do that, what we get is then that grad P is equal to, well, we'll have to take care of the 1 over mu naught, and then we'll, what we'll get is a curl of B, K okay, crossed B. Now, that's kind of uh, ugly looking. And so if you use a vector identity, uh, it turns out you can also write this as 1 over mu naught times b dot del b, uh, and then minus 1 half del b squared. So you, this is just a working out of a vector identity, b, b cross, in this case, uh, a curl. So now, if we go back and play our little games here, remember we had that the net force was, in fact, equal to J cross B minus grad P. What we then can say is that the J cross B is what we've been working out over here. Uh, this will give us now just, uh, well, the J cross B will give us a 1 over mu naught times a uh, B dot del B and then minus one-half del B squared. And then the pressure gradients will give us a minus del P, grad P. But I can add those two together, okay, and so that's plasma pressure, kinetic pressure, plus magnetic pressure. And then this one over mu naught B dot del B uh, is another such term, but I'll kind of put it together this way. So this will be minus the gradient of kinetic pressure plus magnetic pressure. Uh, and then there's this other term. Now, why didn't we have this last term, by the way, when we dealt with a cylinder? Well, it turns out we had only radial derivatives and B was in the axial direction, so it goes away uh, for a cylinder, it turns out. Um, but what does this tell us the net force on a plasma? How do I get a net force on a plasma and get it in equilibrium? What does this term represent? Well, that's just a, a pressure expansion, okay? That's, uh, that's what, if I had just grad P, that's, that's what it is. But on the other hand, it says, well, the plasma kinetic pressure has that expansion force, but in addition, there's an expansion force because the magnetic field lines want to move apart, want to push away as well. So the basic idea um, is that this is just the, um, I will tell what that one is in a moment, but uh, anyway, this is just an expansion force uh, due to the kinetic pressure P and the magnetic pressure B squared over 2 mu naught. Uh, the pressures, basically, of those two, or the gradients of their energy density, depending on which way you want to look at it. Now, first off, that's a term which is negative. It's an expansion force. It tries to take, it's a force to take plasma from high pressure to low pressure, actually. Uh, that's what the minus sign means. This one is nominally a positive force. And what does it represent? Nominally, because you have to worry about the vectorial directions. And what does it represent? 
Well, it's effectively the tension of the field lines, okay, because of their magnetic field line curvature. So this is the uh, tension force. due to magnetic field line curvature. And so if we want, in general, for there to be an equilibrium, we have to get those two forces to balance. Okay? And we have to do so in all directions, along the magnetic field, perpendicular magnetic field, and so forth and so on. Okay, so let's go a little further in this business. So then if we want the, come back to the more general relation here, if we want the net force to be equal to zero, then what we want to do is we want to take this expansion force and balance it with the tension force. So what that gives us is that the gradient of P plus B squared over 2 mu naught has to be equal to 1 over mu naught times b dot del b. And previously, when we dealt with a cylindrical model, then this gave us sort of approximately p plus b squared over 2 mu naught is approximately constant. But obviously, it's not quite because of the, it turns out, the curvature of the magnetic field lines. Again, though, what we see, um, well, um, okay, so, uh, is that uh, along, well, uh, sorry, I'm getting a little confused here, but anyway, along B you can also show again, let me just say it that way, that uh, B dot the net force is equal to zero implies uh, B dot grad P is equal to zero. And so that's because along the magnetic field, it turns out the magnetic field tension for, or expansion force and tension force because of the curvature, in fact, uh, balance. Again, you, um, well, you see that the key parameter that indicates how strong is the magnetic field relative to the plasma is given by the ratio of their energy densities. So the key parameter uh, is beta. So now let's look at a little bit how all this works in a, uh, in a magnetic mirror machine. Remember we have our little magnetic mirror machine that does this as usual. I've got my various magnetic field lines here. Always hard to get this right. And the basic idea is I've got a, uh, a large magnetic field strength here, a medium one here, and an even smaller one there. And so which direction, uh, oh, and I'm going to imagine that I have some, some plasma in here, okay? And which direction then is grad B squared? Well, in one sense, okay, in the magnetic mirror machine, along the magnetic field lines, okay, it's both ways, grad B squared is that way. But radially, it's from outward to in. So this is grad B squared. And our pressure, which direction is grad pressure? Well, Okay, grad pressure is also in that same direction. But I can arrange to have an equilibrium if, well, uh, oh, I'm sorry, and then the net force, okay, on the plasma, okay, is this, well, is actually zero, but this outward force is the gradient of pressure plus B squared over 2 mu naught. And what it has to be balanced by is this, curvature type term. So it's really a, and, and notice that it varies along the magnetic field. And, and I won't sort of go into this in detail, you can work out the mathematics of it, but to do it really out in detail becomes um, uh, really quite difficult. 
Usually we think of relatively small plasma pressure, and because of that, this plasma pressure doesn't distort the magnetic fields very much. Okay, now, so that's kind of some of our characteristics uh, of a magnetic field, uh, equilibrium. And in general, the thing really to get out of this is that there's this parameter beta that determines the ratio of the plasma pressure to the magnetic energy density. Now we'll go on to a little bit different subject. I use the word the plasma pushes the magnetic field out of the way or vice versa. Okay? Well, we need to be a little more specific about that. So what I want to discuss finally here is the motion of the magnetic field uh, versus that of the plasma. Now, um, first what we want to do is consider, and that's all we'll have time for today, an infinitely conducting, electrically that is, that means sigma goes to infinity, eta goes to zero, uh, plasma. Then our Ohm's law becomes that the current is equal to sigma E plus V cross B. <coughs> and in fact, you know, you put the sigma over on the other side, and what this goes to in the limit that the conductivity goes to zero is in fact that E plus V cross B is equal to zero. Okay. What does that mean? Well, now what I want to do is get at some evolution of the magnetic field in the presence of the plasma is the question. So let's look at Faraday's induction law. What that says is that dB dt is equal to minus curl of E. We usually write it the opposite way around, namely curl of E is equal to minus dB dt, but I'm looking for an evolution of the magnetic field here. Well, minus curl of E, I guess I could have written here that E was equal to minus V cross B. Okay. So minus the curl of E means then that this is the curl of V cross B. So this says physically that if the plasma flows in a magnetic field, this is the equation governing how the magnetic field changes. Now that's kind of an ugly form, let me put it that way. But what you can show is that if, and, and this is, uh, well, what I want to do at this point is say C. Bittencourt, because he proves this in some nice detail, but it takes a fair amount of algebra to do this right. Uh, page 325 to 328. And what you can show is that if I consider this m equation of motion for magnetic field lines, or the density of magnetic field lines, you can show that if I integrate those field lines over some surface, and I'll sketch this in a moment, that this is equal to zero. And this is called the frozen flux theorem. And now let me try to illustrate um, what this means. So it's called the frozen flux theorem. If you just kind of think about this a little bit physically, if I had a perfectly conducting plasma, superconductor, okay, superconducting plasma, you could sort of imagine that if I started trying to move, somehow or other the field lines are frozen into the plasma. If the plasma moves, the field lines have to move with it, okay? And that's exactly what this theorem says, and this is the mathematics that goes with that statement. It says if I imagine a bunch of field lines here, and, you know, i got a whole bunch of them here. 
But let's say that I have a bunch of them going through some particular surface, okay? What this theorem says is that no matter what the plasma does in moving around, okay, that the number of field lines, okay, going through this surface, which encompasses the same amount of plasma particles, okay, as it did before, the bundle of field lines stays the same. I, I, this is always kind of hard to say. The basic idea is if the plasma moves, the magnetic field moves with it because all the field lines penetrate one given region of the plasma. And if that plasma expands, then the field lines expand. That's what that frozen flux theorem says, or that's what this mathematics says, that if the plasma moves, the magnetic field changes in such a way to have the same number of field lines permeating the same bundle of flux. Now, that only applies perpendicular to the magnetic field, not parallel. Next time, what we'll talk about, we'll come back and talk about this some more, but what we'll in addition talk about is the fact that if I add a little bit of resistivity, then the plasma can get loose from the magnetic field or diffuse relative to it. But we'll talk about that next time.